and welcome back. This is the 2011 Simple Green U.S. Open here at Fountain Valley, California, Los Caballeros Sports Village. It's the greatest player in the game today, Dave. Paul Brady coming off a shattered left finger, teaming up with partner Michael Finnegan, taking on fellow compatriots Desi Keegan and Seamus O'Carroll. Seamus. Close enough. <laughs> but incorrect. <laughs> That's true. Zero serving zero. Play ball. We'll try to point out the players for you. There's Desi Keegan up in the front court. One of the hardest hitters in the game. One of, if not the. Side out. Hmm. Michael Finnegan from Cavan, zero, County Cavan. Serving zero. Talking to Chip Morales earlier today, Dave. He said that the biggest difference Point in their loss Point last back. night was the Michael Finnegan serve. He said Michael Finnegan hit about 10 aces in each game. Michael Fick Finnegan lives in Kings Court, County Cabin. It's interesting, Dave, when zero, I was watching that match, zero. I saw Paul Brady flat kill 12 balls in a row. I guess that didn't have anything to do with <laughs> the outcome. Wow. And there's Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? That's the point. That looked like it came point. out of a serve pitching zero. machine or something. Well, like a bullet, Dave. <laughs> we see a lot of long rallies here in doubles, Dave, but you won't see that when Paul Brady touches the ball because when he shoots, the point is over. So here's another attempt. The ball just kind of ate him up a little bit there. Paul Brady's last apparent appearance, Dave, on American soil was a loss to one of the unheralded That's superstars point. in the American game, Two, Mike Snyder. I know, Dave, you have him in your top five on most all-around lists. Half down. Two, Which list zero. are you talking about? Hmm. Mike Schneider oh. is a texting buddy of mine, and he's on my text list, my Second favorite serve. five, but that's about the only list. Well, that's actually the list <laughs> to which I was referring. <laughs> Desi Keegan actually beat Paul Brady in the All-Ireland Doubles final a couple of years ago. So he won't be intimidated in That's there, the although point. it won't matter. Three, serving zero. It won't matter. Just like Nadia Alvarado wasn't intimidated today by Robbie McCarthy, but that didn't matter either. Boy, that ball Side just out. shot out from that corner. No call from the referee. Paul was looking for a slide or a bad bounce. Zero. Or maybe he's looking three. for a hinder. Short. Desi Keegan nearly driving that Second ball into third. the floor. He will hit at least two serves into the floor per in game. this match. Per game. Well, this is double, so he's only serving half as many times. So. One, three. Long ball. Wow. And there's a double fault. I count that, Second actually. Third. That's not a double fault. That was. They got the ball into play. Okay, you're right. I thought it was a double I'm fault. counting your errors, actually. Okay. I hope to have less than Seamus O'Carroll. Seamus. That's gotcha. three. Seamus with zero. Three, again. It's I've a game of streaks, though, Dave. I've yet to see Seamus hit a ball, and that's the first one. We saw Andy Nett come back from a 16 to 1 deficit. I think I can come back from a 0 to 3 deficit. We'll see. We played a 21. One, serving three. We have rally scoring in the booth, though. That's true. Right up. And now it's 1 3 as I inch closer. Three, serve one. Mike Finnegan serving. Look at that shot. Phenomenal. Back wall kill from Paul Brady. Referee timeout. Hold up. They say I have to put this on. Referee has to 
The referee has to make it all about himself, is what the referee I think is, you're trying to say. The referee is stopping action right now so he can put on a shirt that says that he's the referee. Never. Start spreading the news. I, I really, this I'm is not really today. something I. Is that the 40-year-old virgin? I want to <laughs> be a part <laughs> Kelly Clarkston. That's actually Frank Sinatra. No, I was talking about the 40-year-old virgin when they. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was funny. I can't believe that this is happening right now. But it is. No, I, I don't believe you. We had to make sure everybody knew the referee was yeah, yeah, the referee. That. Sorry for disrupting play for three the minutes so I could put on a shirt. I couldn't wait until the first timeout, which will be within four minutes. I had to do it right there, just before you're about to serve. Somebody's cranky. Well, I can see why the Irish don't come over here to play, Dave. And when they do, they just... <laughs> clean house. This is absolutely <laughs> absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Man down. Four. Serving yeah, one. I just never seen anything like it. Four serves one. This is the semifinals of the men's doubles Four. and that ball almost skipped in. Second serve. What in the Desi Keegan's going on with that serve? Actually, I disagree with you there. That's a wild shot from Paul Brady. But Desi Keegan actually hits down on his serve, Dave, from about chest height. One, You'll see how he drives the ball four. down. Paul Brady hits the ball parallel with the floor. Much That's a nice like serve it, right there from Desi Keegan. Excellent serve. Two, serving four. Short. Second serve. You? Play again. Desi Keegan catching on to the American style of handball, Dave. He's asking for the towel now after every point. Apparently in Ireland, they don't even have towels. I know they don't shower. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I'm not sure. It's late. <laughs> Two plays four. <laughs> Two serves four. I'm trying to offend an entire nation within the first five points of this match. Well, you've already offended this <laughs> nation that you live in, so you might as well start working on all the other ones that are watching. Look at that beautiful shot right there. Seamus O'Carroll coming up toward the front camera there. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold it. Two. Uh Playing four. Oh, I thought no, our referee had to change his shirt again. Sorry. <laughs> That's a point. Well, he, he's one of the only referees that has to go up there with two or three shirts. Three, playing four. He sweats a lot. Three serves four. Right and out. there's two for Seamus. Seamus defeated Tyree Four, Bastidas in the 19 and under World Finals in 2009 in Portland. Look at that shot. Do you remember when you used to make those? Hmm. And down. And Desi Keegan pops it right in front of Paul Brady. Four, three. Four serves three. Paul Brady serving. Alongside, that looked like it was short. Look like a skip ball to me on the floor. Oh, a skip ball on the floor? Play that again, Paul. Four, serving three. Paul Brady hits that ball so hard, everything looks like a skip on the floor. I thought it was short. Skipped on the floor. Play it again. Guys, check the floor for me, please. I'm playing all of these over now, saying that they're skipping on the floor. Well, clearly Nacho's never seen Paul Brady play. He hits the ball so hard that his ball does actually skip across the floor with the amount of velocity and haste that he puts on the ball. This is what happens when you have a referee that's never played small ball handball before. Actually, this referee is a good small ball handball player. I'm not speaking relative to you. Short. Second serve.
And an air there from Sheamus. Five, three. See, that ball looked like it <laughs> jumped off, and Paul, I agree with Paul you. ends up playing it. Love to have a, a word, Dave, with tomorrow's finalist, Robbie McCarthy, who's actually sitting in the booth here. I don't know if he'd be willing to, no, he, he doesn't want to, to don talk. a headset, though. It's, Six, it's up to Robbie. Three. If he feels like he wants to talk, there's a headset right over there. But Robbie has played all of his matches in this court. Be interested to hear his opinion on these walls and floors. If it is difficult to play in there, Dave, it certainly looks like it is from here. A lot of unpredictable bounces. I'd like to talk to Robbie Shut about up. the person that he played today and how that affects him when he plays somebody who Three, is who, somebody who is stalling and having good Long gamesmanship. Ball. And I think that Second finally serve. persuaded him. <laughs> Maybe. He wants to talk about that. Let's turn his microphone on here in the booth. There we go. Even though we turned his microphone on, I, I swear back home you're not going to be able to understand what Robbie is saying. So, Robbie, playing against Nadi Alvarado today and in that court, he does pull a lot of uh, gamesmanship and shenanigans. How does that affect you in the court? Uh, it didn't affect me at the start. But uh, after a while, it kind of got to me. It took a really long time for the serve, but he just used his head. He's clever. He knew what he had to do. Like Some would call that clever. Now, do you see any of that going on in Ireland? No, you're only allowed to, you're allowed 10 seconds to get the ball and then 10 seconds to serve the ball and that's it. Like, it's not until your opponent's ready. It's just that's all you have. Now, when Nadi goes down and, and dives for a ball and slides on that knee and then immediately calls for the towel, what does that do? No, that, 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 he, he's right. Like, uh, his knee, he has a knee bandage on and he comes across the floor. It does leave a wet patch on the floor, so yeah. you, can't, you can't fall for that. Like, he is right. Like, but what about the referee telling him to take that off? You can't. Like, well, if he has an injury, like, you can't. But does he have an injury? I don't know. You know See, longer than I do. Well, I'm just saying. Well, I think people assume that there's an injury there. Naughty had an injury on that other knee. I don't know if his right knee was ever injured. I've never heard of a right knee injury. I think it's one of those things where the players aren't asking the referee to have him take it off and have the referee see if it is injured. Well, I didn't know that before I played him. Someone could have told me that, but uh, he just had to go with the flow. Like he, he just played to his advantages. He just used his head. Smart. That's what you call it, smart. Didn't look like you thought he was too smart as you two jarred a little bit in there as the oh, second game became heated. Uh, uh, that was just a couple of difference of opinions. There wasn't really much said there. I noticed that when you guys are throwing the ball back to each other, there's seemed like a little bit of animosity, but enough about that. Oh, yeah. You are now in the oh, finals yeah. of the U.S. Open of handball, and you know what a great achievement. You've seen this event down here for Seven, the last... Three. Uh, I guess five years. I mean, started in 2006, and then in 2009, the World Championships came over, and we didn't have a U.S. Open, but we've had champions like Paul Brady, Tony Healy, Alan Garner, and now you are going to be in the finals here. What does that mean to you to be playing for all that money that you're going to be donating to the GAA, and what does that mean for yourself here, Robbie? Uh, it's good to get to a final. I didn't expect to get to a final like this. Uh, I only had a little bit of small that he played, but uh, That's the point. delighted to get to the final. It means a lot. Like, it means there's a bit of an improvement too, you know. Like I, only sta I started Three. a lot of training in the middle of there last year, really, and it just goes to show that it's paying off. Like a couple of years ago, it was nowhere near this, like you know. So it just mean it means a good bit to me now at the minute. Now we heard that you took some time off from handball Three. after your Three. junior Eight. career which ended about five years ago. Is that is that true? And how did that impact your your play today? Uh, I didn't take much time off. Uh, I was I was playing all right. I just wasn't playing as much. So I just didn't enter as much, you know. I was just taking a lot. And uh, it didn't really affect much. Maybe the, it was the, like, I had to go to six juniors. And like, I was just getting sick of handball. I needed, I kind of needed a break. Like, you look at all Luis and Sean and all that, they all play well at certain tournaments, but then by the time some other tournaments come around, they're, they're bored. They don't, want, they don't want to be there. 
So sometimes the break is the best option, you know? Well, I think Dave Fink is about at that moment in his career where he might need to take a late career break, yeah, maybe forever. Oh. I mean, I'm not suggesting, I'm just saying it could be an option. <laughs> might help him out for other things, Robbie. Uh, I did know. take nine years off, it didn't help. <laughs> May take another nine, <laughs> well. just for you. Maybe your break was too eight, long. Maybe you should just five. make it eight years this next time. <laughs> Come now, back when you're 40-something. Now, Robbie, you're playing Charlie Shanks tomorrow. Yeah. Have you guys hooked up at all in Ireland at any of the big Irish championships recently? Uh, no, we played each other in, uh, I played him in the John Gaffney Memorial Nine, tournament last January. And uh, I beat him. And then last October, he, we played each other in the Golden Gloves final, and he beat me in a tie break as well. So, like, it's gone. There's, Nine, there's never usually five. much between us, but like, the last couple of times I played Charlie, I was never, I was never fit. Like, I'm not saying he ran me into the ground or anything. Charlie played well when he won. Like, in fairness to him, I never deny him that he won. But uh, I'm a bit fitter now, like as well. So, it will it will be a tough leg. Like, it won't be much in it. It should be only a toss of a coin, really. And then plus whoever. He's had tough matches. I've had a few tough matches. Like you don't know whose body's going to last the longest at the minute. Like, how are you adjusting to this new ball? Do you find it similar to the ball that you use in Ireland, or is this something that's that's completely different? It's similar ball, yeah, but um, it's just an awful lot faster for some reason. It's th the same way. It, it's it's not spinning like the red ace. You know, the red ace used to spin when it was coming at you and everything. Uh, like it's 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 okay, like, but it's very very fast. It's a lot of it takes a lot of adjusting. Could it be, Robbie, that the courts are so much warmer here? I know in Ireland the courts are damp and it's cold and the ball really never gets warmed up and the, the air is heavy. Here you've got sort of a, a desert air and and the courts are, are about 90 degrees inside there. The ball just flies around. Perhaps that has something to do with it. Yeah, that, that, that possibly is it. Like it's, a, it's very, very warm here, so it is compared to Ireland. Like in our courts, you'd be lucky if the ball even come back half as quick. But then sometimes it's a bad thing, like it, everything dies when it's going to the back wall, like, you know. But in here the ball comes really quick at you, but then when it hits the back wall you have to go back to get it, it stops. I, I don't know, that I don't understand that bit. And it used to be that the ball, you'd have to take an extra two steps out for the mm -hmm. ball. And now you have to go back for it. So I don't, I don't know, I think it's McCormick that's making them, isn't it, in Ireland? Max Sports. Right, right. Yeah, he's making the new ball now, and he's making the Irish ball too, but uh, guys, a lot of them in. are breaking lately. The score is Second man serving. Why Ten, don't why don't you um, why don't you just make sure that no balls go to the back wall? It's not, <laughs> it's not as easy as that. Some, <laughs> sometimes it's easier to hit the back wall. Just cut everything off, Robbie. We're not Ro three wall players. <laughs> Robbie, you mentioned that you played Charlie a couple times in the last year, splitting with him. <coughs> How much of a factor do you think nerves will be tomorrow? <coughs> as you're playing in a huge final here <coughs> for the biggest person there'll be, there'll in Hamilton. There'll be no nerves from either of us tomorrow. We know how to play each other. Like, we've played each other a lot. And there won't be, like, at, as far as we're concerned, two of us are after doing really well. So, like, it's just another game at the minute. Like, that's, there's not, it's not, I know we're playing for a big prize, but it's just going to be another game. That's all. Now, let me just change gears here for one second now. My broadcast partner doesn't allow me to talk about anybody but him. Oh, but I, I'm, I'm just wanting you to sit down in your chair here. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you about Paul Brady. Now, Paul Brady not entered in the singles here. What is his motivation here this week? Is he here just sort of having a good time trying to get himself back into handball? Or is this a serious competition for him in the doubles? Paul, Paul takes every, ter every tournament he enters in serious. It's in, as he said himself, he wasn't ready. He wasn't, he didn't feel like he was 100% and he didn't, he wasn't ready to play singles after the finger injury, you know? And you, c you have to respect him for that, like, he's, he's better off that he plays something that he's gonna give a good shot at. Like, if he played singles and he had done more damage to his hand, like, what would you have done then, you know? It could be, it might be right for a couple, 100% for a couple of months. You're watching game number one here between Paul Brady and his partner, Mike Finnegan, versus Desi Keegan and Seamus O'Carroll. This is the men's semifinals, lower bracket, of the pro doubles division. Upper bracket already, we have Vince Munoz and Marco Chavez waiting for the winner of this one, and then we'll know who will play in tomorrow's 10 a.m. final. Thought that final was 
at 11. That's the men's pro singles. Singles <laughs> are at 11, but the doubles are before that, 9.30, I believe. Okay. Or as our broadcast attendee, Robbie McCarthy says, half, half a nine. Half nine. Half nine. <laughs> Trying to get the lingo down here. 13 Robbie. It's tough. 13 to five is the score. This is game number one. Paul Brady, the gunner from Ireland, wearing it's that. It's great to be joined shirt. here, Dave, by uh, tomorrow's finalist, Robbie the Buzzsaw McCarthy. 14 serving five. It's actually your nickname. Where did I get that? Well, it's it was a given to you. It was given to you by your style of play. How you were actually your haircut combined with how you buzz saw right through every opponent. <laughs> fifteen five. <laughs> no opponent scored more than fifteen points on you in any game through three front rounds foot. here. Watch your front foot, Paul. Now, Robbie, I wanted to ask Second you, you third. remember the Seattle Wax now. That's a, a huge responsibility playing for for our club. You're part of the Washington Athletic Club is what he's trying to say. Is that it, yeah? Yeah. Will we be seeing you at more race parade pro stops throughout this pro tour season? Eh, maybe, yeah, I have to see. I don't, I don't know what the schedule is yet. I'll just see how it goes at the minute. Maybe. Well, the schedule's been posted Second for about taken. 10 straight months and <laughs> maybe 12. So you, it's always there for you, yeah, Robbie. Well. And in two weeks, Tucson, Arizona has a big pro stop there. You, yeah. you could take some of the funds from this one, <laughs> wire it back home, and stay in Tucson. It's just down the street. It's about uh, seven, uh, seven hours or so from here. Be um, car. And I'm sure you can rent a limo with that <laughs> cash that you've already won. I haven't won any cash. Well, you technically have. Yeah. Well. Maybe, I don't know, I gotta go, I go home first anyway, see, like, it's two weeks, I have to go home. And do what? I'll see the miss, see the girlfriend and the baby, so. Uh-huh. Okay, well, they'll still be there when you get back from Tucson. Well, I don't think she'd be too happy if I stayed another two weeks. That's actually true, you wouldn't understand that, <laughs> Dave, but. <laughs> yeah, Dave. Th th there's well, truth to that. I don't even, I, the, the tournament is in Tucson, I don't even go home until the tournament. Huh. That's how I do it. 20 seconds. <laughs> I take these opportunities to get away from the kids. You actually miss yours. Yeah, Isn't that I do. weird? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you'll be like me in a couple years. Hey. <laughs> well, his can't it's talk back yet either. His, yeah, his can. Her name is Ashley, and she does talk, actually. Yeah. So hello to Ashley from... Now, Ashley's not awake right now, Robbie, because I think it's a little too late for her. Definitely in bed, yeah. Six, 15. Sixers 15, Desi Keegan serving to Mike Finnegan from Kings Court County Cabin. That's Seamus O'Carroll wearing the yellow man shirt. Down, man. So who, who, who's on my team now? Who's, who's team am I on? We do the interviewing here. You do the <laughs> answer. Somebody asking a question. <laughs> uh, Seattle so Wax are John Bike, David Fink, who will soon be off the <laughs> rankings, so that's <laughs> not going to be good for your team. <laughs> okay. Let's think of another. Sean Lenning, yeah. who you defeated. That was a win-win for your team. Actually, a win-loss, but sort of a win-win. I thought it was a win, win, win. I guess so, yeah. So Sean Lenning, Dave Fink, John Bike, and yourself are part of the Seattle WAC team. I don't think I miss anybody, 15. right, Dave? No, you're not. So during this race for eight, you, the players accumulate points for themselves, but the players are also on teams that accumulate points, and therefore you could be eight, part of a team that, that could win the team championship, which could be a lot of serious accolades and potential prizes that the we way won't we name. look at it Robbie is very much how you look at a Gaelic football team you certainly want to have your individual stars but at the end Final. of the day the team is the most important component and it's team first <laughs> are you sure you're not talking eight. about a hurling you, you actually are talking about Gaelic football yes I okay, am all right Second, sir. <laughs> those team points if you are the team winner you could maybe get a trip to Maui yeah yeah maybe like that word, maybe. I do. Well, that's why it's important for you to travel to more of these so, so American events. How many points did I make for the team? Well, so far, it's a lot. I would say a minimum of 100. There is a, a secretive formula that we will not discuss here 16, on the 16. webcast, but there is an algorithm that's been created. It's a computer program 
We really have nothing to do with it. It just, the results go immediately into the computer, it's and it spits out the results at the end of it each week. And the name of the computer is called the FRA algorithm. Well, you can use that algorithm with a Mac or PC, right. but the name of the actual program is called the FRA algorithm. Man down. In the quest Second for the serving. super ball of handball. 17, serving eight. In other words, you're on a team here in America, Start. and I don't know what that is going to do for your serve. fellow countrymen back home who think that, oh, wait a second, Robbie's become too Americanized. He's on an American team. <laughs> I don't know if that takes Got away out. your amateur status or not. Yeah, I'm amateur. Still amateur. <laughs> You're still amateur. Eight, still amateur. 17. Robbie said earlier that all the money that he gets from this tournament all completely being donated. Hmm. To the Seattle Wax <laughs> Development <laughs> Fund? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Nine, serving 17. I'll make sure that that money is well spent. <laughs> Nine to 17, the scoreboard powered by Zions, the official sports drink Second of the third. UFC. I highly doubt anybody in Ireland is really watching at this point. That ball looked like it slid. Robbie, if you had an opportunity to play Paul Brady in the last six to eight months. Um, no. Time out? Uh, none. Played him in March, the Ireland semi-final. But he beat me bad. But he, that was before, it was the week before he hurt his finger. Thank you. Then he hurt his finger. Yeah, he couldn't hurt it that week. You know? Yeah, <laughs> couldn't have done but it. He still managed to win that All Ireland yeah, Championship knows. with that bad yeah. finger. No timeouts. But he had started. two good fingers when he played me. Just point that out. I I knew that. I do do my homework. What read was up on the my uh, newsletters? What was the scores of that match? I actually know them, and I'd like to see how just how good my knowledge is. Well, go ahead and say it. Twenty-one ten. Twenty-one ten. Yep. Is that correct? 21 10, 21 Maybe 9. To I was going to say 9. To get some, uh, well, you're off. You're off the uh, broadcast. This job. has been a great day for you. <laughs> I just took your job. It, it was fun. Okay? Really fun. We'll just leave that there. It was a it's it was a successful run for you today. It's about time you got rid of him though. Yeah, he had to yeah, go. He had to go. I mean, he made four errors. We only we cap it at 3. Yeah. <laughs> now we got a bike. <laughs> You never said anything about <laughs> not being able to use a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be carrying this around with me everywhere I go and reporting on everything I do. It's going to be a long night. Can't wait for it to happen. Now, Robbie, a lot of us are making comparisons with your game, sort of a contrast between an Owen Kennedy and a Paul Brady. Are those two of the players that you've tried to mold yourself after, or do you try and develop your own style, or are there things that you try and pick up from – from each player that you respect? I don't know, I, I, it's just, I'm just doing my own thing. I'm not passing any heat on anybody else. So uh, I trained a lot with Paul. Like I played Paul an awful lot when I was younger. I played on an awful lot when I was younger. But we don't play each other as much now, so. Well, s certainly during those developmental years, it seems like a lot of their style, their the good aspects of their style, not that they're any bad, but rubbed off on you. And I can see a lot in that in your game. Yeah, well, I'd like to be, I'd like to be fit and strong like Paul, but or like I'd like to own move very well. Own used to move very well. And for like he used to have a good ceiling game. And Paul has a really strong killing game. I'd like to have a good a mixture of that, like a good ceiling and a good killing game. Now you're the current sixty by thirty All Ireland champion. You're the current Irish national four wall twenty by forty champion. You also play one wall. Now, what code of handball do you prefer? What game do you enjoy the most? And what game do you think you're best? I don't know. I honestly don't know what I'm best at. I prefer 60 by 30 by far, but I don't know what I'm best at. Like, it's, it depends which one I train for, like, really, I suppose. Uh, I play hardball, too, so I like hardball now. But uh, I don't know. I can't. I've had good wins in each of them, I suppose. You also played in a team competition in Italy where you defeated 
Herman Mendez, who's the Irish national one wall big blue champion. Okay? A yeah. huge win there for you. Yeah, it was a good game there. Herman's a good buddy of mine. I'd say he's listening now. I'd probably Make sure everybody gets back uh, actually, he's not. Didn't oh. buy a membership okay, guys, for the no pay-per-view. <laughs> Injury timeout. Nine. Serving huh. 17. Oh, God. Hey, Fink now has earned his spot back into the booth with the regular headset, so he'll put that on. Very good line of questioning there. That was the bonus round, and now you're back in safe. I didn't think it was a great answering round, though. Well, he doesn't have a favorite. Replay. Robbie McCarthy just plays whatever you <coughs> throw in front of him. He's, he loves one wall, but he likes 60 by 30 better. He's had success in 40 by 20. He just likes it all. Just like when you go out and play, you can't really say which one's your favorite. I bet you if you played 60 by 30, you would fall in love with it and never want to play the other sports again. It's one of the very best forms of handball by far. But we don't have any of those alleys here. Should. Should, but don't. Real estate's a little expensive. I don't know if you've tried it. That amount of spa space down here Replay, would be nine, pushing a couple million dollars just to, for the space if you're going to put it right on the beach. It's very expensive. Just so a couple guys won't go down and play. Check the ball, please. Well, people in the United States would be thinking about how many spinning bikes how many Pilates <laughs> studios they could cram into a 60 by 30 court. Anything that prohibits competition is the goal here in the United States. Your sister texted me and said that uh, you weren't playing good that day that you lost to Paul Brady. And she said that you've done really good in this tournament and she has uh, a lot of big plans for you when you get home with a welcome party. And, and can you pronounce her name? It's nine. Aoife. Aoife. Aoife, yeah. Aoife. Aoife. And then Abraham Montijo wants Two to say hello to you. You're getting a lot of text nine. messages from I know from you don't fans. know him, but he's... Uh, I do know him, yeah. No, you yeah. don't. You don't no. know who he is. <laughs> no? Okay, am I not meant to know who he is, no? <laughs> no. Okay. No, Abraham says hello to you. Short. Getting a lot of text messages now I from people that bad. are watching this we'll broadcast saying that, you know, to say hi and Two welcome, sir. you know, hope that you have a... 18, Good match nine. tomorrow. Looks like you have a lot of fans, Rob. And fortunately, we're in a position to relay every single message of every person watching. No other sport will do this, but handball? Different. Score first game here is 18-9 to nine with Paul Brady and Mike Finnegan serving. Actually, that might have been the 19th point. No, oh, hey. 19. 19, serving nine. We talked a little bit this morning, Robbie, about the rising stars in the women's game. Could you talk a little bit about who you think is on the rise in Ireland? Men or women, both? 20, and possible game point, nine. This is game point right here before you answer that question with Mike Finnegan serving. Contact. Mike Finnegan and Desi Keegan have a history. <laughs> Robbie, you can I actually thought it was Michael Gregan no, and Desi point. Keegan. It's Finnegan. it's Finnegan and Desi. Short. I'm not sure about that. I it's am short. sure about it. I can tell you nobody wow. has a history with Mike Gregan, not even his own girlfriend. I actually played doubles with Desi Keegan against Michael Gregan, and there was history. I could feel it. <coughs> Robbie could speak up, but he's electing not 20, to. 20, possible game point. He's a nine. diplomat. We here in the point. booth threw dip diplomacy down the drain a long time ago. Second serve. Now, what was your question to Robbie here? This is game point here, by the way. There it is. Okay, 21 to Five 9. Paul three. Brady and Mike Finnegan close out Desi Keegan and Seamus O'Carroll in that first game of the semifinal. Asking Robbie what up and coming players does he see coming from Ireland? It's been such a steady stream of great players starting with the generation of Duxie Walsh and now Paul Brady and Tony Healy, Owen Kennedy, Charlie Shanks, Robbie McCarthy. Who's next? Um, I don't know. It's You're talking really young, like you have Killian Carroll. 
Is from Cork. He's about eighteen. He's very good. Tra trends there with Tony Healy, I think, and he's after coming on very well. You have Dermot Nash. Seamus is really good in singles. Um, after that, like you have loads of younger kids, like around sixteen. You have Martin McCurns, Darren Doherty. Like you're getting stronger and stronger. Like they are very strong underage. What but about like Robbie? Oh, uh, Robbie, Fox. Robbie Fox. Yeah, Robbie <laughs> Fox from Kells. He's, He's probably be good. still up watching this. I know, you know he that? has yeah. to be, yeah. Has to be. Uh, yeah, Robbie's going to be very good. And Evan, Evan uh, Sheridan there, Tom's young lad. He's very strong too. So, But they play a lot of big alley as well, you know, so it's hard to just keep concentrating on one. Do you think the big alley actually helps you when you come back into the smaller court, building up that arm strength, yeah. adding power? It would, yeah, definitely. Paul played the big alley this year and he looks an awful lot stronger. He's hitting the ball really hard. Uh, Michael played the big alley, he's hitting the ball really hard. Desi played it, he's hitting it hard. Talk about Paul Brady playing in uh, the big alley. How how impressed were you with a guy that really hasn't played a lot of 60 by 30, how he was able to come in, Robbie, and and uh, and get some wins? Yeah, he had a great win, so he did now uh, in the first round of the doubles. Um, a really good win over the All-Ireland champions. So... Like, I don't know how he does it, but like he motivates himself to do everything. The man, I think the man can do anything, really, in handball. He can even play one wall. So, it's a big... I don't know what to say about him. Well, we're going to take a time out as we uh, want to thank Robbie McCarthy for stopping by the booth here and uh, having an exclusive interview with the broadcast crew, Paul Brady and Mike Finnegan, defeating Desi Keegan. And Seamus O'Carroll in that first game, 21 to 9. For Dave Fink and Robbie McCarthy, my name is Dave Vincent. About two minutes, we'll be back for game number two of this men's semifinal action. Stick with us. Race break. Hello, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green. Our non toxic, biodegradable, all purpose cleaner works great for cleaning it. Thank you. Non-toxic, biodegradable, simple green. It's great for cleaning. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. Hello, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green the finest non-toxic cleaner in the world. For more than 35 years, I have worked to establish truth in labeling laws. Many products misrepresent their safety and efficacy. I am so certain you will find that Simple Green does everything the label states safely, that if you're not 100% satisfied, I will refund your purchase. For more information, go to simplegreen.com. For 20 years, the Inner City Handball Association has educated, mentored, and served young people through handball. Young people that participate in the Inner City Handball Association programs have a high graduation rate from high school and continue on to college. Inner City Handball teams are good athletes, good students, and good ambassadors for the sport of handball. We need your help to continue our work. The Inner City Handball Association is a registered 501c3 tax exempt charity. Please donate today. Thank you. Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green, the finest non-toxic cleaner in the world. For more than 35 years, I've worked to establish truth in labeling laws and have verified my product safety credentials. For more information, visit us at simplegreen.com. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green.
and gentlemen. Finnegan Brady serving the second game, start of the second game. Zero, serving zero, play ball. And welcome back, we're here for game number two, men's semifinal doubles, 2011 Simple Green US Open. Paul Brady and partner Michael Finnegan taking game number one. 21-9, now they're just 21 points from advancing to the final. Side out. Quick side out for zero, Team Keegan O'Carroll as Desi comes in to serve. That's only the second time I've ever seen Desi hit the ball overhand with his right. And a terrible air there from Seamus O'Carroll. Cannot afford to make those zero, kind of mistakes. Zero. And a beautiful serve coming off that unforced air. One, zero. And it's Keegan and O'Carroll taking the lead here early Short. in game number one. Very early, as a matter of fact, as just one point Second is on serve. the board. And Paul Brady with just an absolutely incredible two-wall pass. He's the only guy in handball that can zero, hit that shot. One and he seems to be able to hit it at will. And there's a paddle Man service down. return Check kill ball, from Seamus O'Carroll. Take a quick timeout here as Michael Finnegan wipes up the floor. Conditions becoming a little bit dangerous inside the Los Caballeros show court as the walls are very slippery, as are the right floors. Okay, second man serving. Zero, serving one. A lot of side outs and half outs here thus far early in game number two. Long chat with Ireland's Robbie McCarthy during game number one. He'll be Zero, in the men's one. singles final Start. tomorrow. Talking about Paul Brady, his progression as a player, his lifetime record against Charlie Shanks, and his favorite codes of handball. We pretty much covered it all. One. Serving one. Now it's one serving one here. Paul Brady looks a little bit hesitant to let that left hand go. We know he's coming off that shattered finger injury. Never heard a finger diagnosed as shattered before, but that's been the official medical description that we were faxed from Paul Brady's personal doctor. Right out personal doctor one, required to give one. us email updates every day it's part of his job and Seamus trying to fight off that drive from his knees but unable one, one. action here early in game number two, but Second not serve. a lot of scoring. What's interesting is Paul Brady plays the left despite that injured digit. Ball Side pops out. up, Seamus diving early. Should have kept running through that ball, but he was anticipating 
the front wall, side wall crack. The ball popping up and holding up there. One, one. This is not just your club doubles here, although these guys could very well be playing in Ireland in a practice match. These guys are playing for $10,000. The winning team splitting that $10,000. It's up to the players Two, seven, one. to determine who gets what percentage of that pot. You see some 50-50 splits, but you also see some 80-20 splits. It all depends on the contract Three, signed before one. the tournament begins. Most doubles players do sign a contract. I know, Dave Vincent, that you're required to sign contracts in all of your money tournaments, giving your partner 95% of the winnings. Actually, it's 100. You're actually required to pay a fine up to the amount of the total prize money should your team lose. So it could be expensive for you. Doubles is not a winning thing for me financially. But I love to play it so much. Huh. It's a personal sacrifice. I've seen some different contracts, Dave, between doubles partners, some doubles partners actually having a statistician in the gallery keeping track of kill shots and airs and aces, and whoever hits more, whatever percentage higher you hit of kill shots, Dave, you are awarded that percent of the pie. So if you've hit 68% of the overall kill shots between uh -huh. your team, Kay. you actually get 68% of the prize money. Yeah, but for Three, me, it's still 0%. Well, I'm, I, I know you that. You said but most I'm saying players. other teams. Right, okay. Other teams, Dave. Yeah, I've never received a percentage. Four, most of the time, it's supposed one. to be 50 50, but. Short. Desi Keegan and. Seamus O'Carroll actually travel with their He's coach, Paddy Short. Gaffney. He sits They're out in the three. front row, Dave, charting every shot. He lets them know exactly who's earned what percent of the pie. Obviously, he takes 20% off the top, Dave, for being the coach. Right. Five, serving one. Score here is five to one. Game two, Paul Brady, Mike Finnegan in the lead. They won the first one, 21 to nine. times Dave people look at a bigger guy and say well he's a he's a better doubles player but I believe in Desi Keegan's case that he's actually a much better singles player than he is a doubles player Six, serving one. well he was in the finals of this tournament last year Dave Paul Brady though can play anything and he is absolutely amazing look how Paul Brady just looks Absolutely Time different out. than everybody else on that floor. As he does any time he plays with anybody on the floor. Just head and shoulders above the competition at all times. Unless he's playing Mike Schneider. Mike Schneider has his number. Paul Brady is wearing the red New York Athletic Club shirt. Widely regarded as the best handball player in the game. In fact, he obviously is the best player that we have in today's world of handball. And Dave, you say he might be one of the best ever. I believe he is the best player that I've ever seen. He's the best player I've ever played. I can't speak to past generations, but in my opinion, Dave, I've never played anyone as powerful, precise, disciplined, and motivated. Well, Paul Brady has a second game lead alongside playing partner Mike Finnegan, his sister Kat, and his dad Kit. So you have Kit Kat back home in Kings Court, County Cavan. 
watching their son, Mike Finnegan. Along that towel timeout sponsored by Tangen Water. Alkaline ionized seven, micro cluster. Healingwithhydration.com. Health in action. Grab yourself a bottle today, Dave. I just became ionized myself during that break, and I feel great. I would have grabbed a bottle, but you're drinking out of mine. That's not water. That's vodka. That's how you get it in the facility. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it, guys. Hold it. You got a wet spot right behind you. Right where you went down. Right there. That's Nacho Delgado taking charge. I always thought it was Charles in charge. Well, it's, it, it, it's Nacho today. Hmm. Thank you, guys, for your patience. And now he's thanking the players <laughs> eight, for their patience. One. He said during one. the break he had too much respect for Nacho to, to even comment on his three-minute official timeout to change his <laughs> shirt on the <laughs> live internet. I was told by John Bike that we're too hard on the referees in the broadcast booth, so I now think Nacho Delgado's doing a great job. <laughs> and I admire him Four, for eight, stopping 31. the action to change into a referee shirt. It certainly enhanced the quality of this match. Who would have known who was the referee had he not changed into that shirt just before Paul Brady was about to serve? I know it's tough to notice. Hold on to that clipboard and walk around with that headset on, the microphone, his colored pencils. Plus the only person in the gallery standing in the referee's spot and yelling the score. Makes it difficult. There's a half out. Now Seamus O'Carroll serves right-handed, but he's actually a lefty, just like Alan Garner. Look at that Irish whip from Paul Brady. He's got right every out. stroke. It's absolutely unbelievable. Eight, and here is one. Guinness Finnegan. Great serve down the left. Mike Finnegan and Nine, it's actually one. called Guinness. Guinness Finnegan and Paul Brady have won so many I championships together. Ball. Surprised you aren't interested to hear how he got his nickname, but I suppose you're not. Nine, I think I already know, one. didn't need to ask. Huh. I don't think you do. Don't know if I want to discuss it. It's one of the first times I've ever seen Paul Brady not put away a setup. And that ball definitely slid, not called. A great no call by our incredibly talented referee here this evening. All the referees throughout the whole day have done a great job. Nine. One. Paul Brady's also the only player that has not called a slide ball. Short. He's not looking for slides. He's looking for rollouts. Serve. His serve, you know, by Dave, the way. In the old school, they say Paul Brady plays the game the way it's supposed to be played in every way. That ball went out in the gallery, I that think. That was a ground rule double. And it seems That's a like replay. Lost the ball. It's a two-stroke penalty, Dave. If you do lose the ball, you have to re-tee from that spot. Mm -hmm. Glove change. I was going to tell you earlier, Dave, that there is some viewers a glove change. Two minutes. in China watching us today. Andy Onate. Onate. Sorry, Andy. I know that you're watching, and I just pronounced your name wrong. But Andy is watching this live broadcast from China, and he wanted us to tell Robbie McCarthy good luck for his match tomorrow, so we'll say that. Robbie's sitting here. Good luck. Robbie. Okay, Robbie's back. He's gone. Hmm. But Robbie got to hear it. So Andy Onete in China right now. Actually, he said it's about, what time? About 9 o'clock in the morning there? As our towel dudes come in and 
mop down the floor. It's 9-1. to one. First game went to Brady and Finnegan, 21-9, to nine, defeating Desi Keegan and Seamus O'Carroll. Paul Brady sponsored by the New York Athletic Club. Stepping back in after that two-minute glove change. It's been a long broadcast day. Tomorrow we start early, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for the women's final between Ashleen Riley and Megan Mahilos. Then right after that, it'll be the men's doubles final at 9.30. Followed 9 by the men's singles final. Right, that's going to be Robbie McCarthy and Charlie Shanks, an all-Irish final. Followed by the semifinals of the three-wall big ball and the finals of the three-wall big ball. We'll start tomorrow morning at 8. We'll conclude around 8 o'clock at night. It's going to be our longest day of the year, and both of us needed a nap earlier today. So Fortunately, Dave, I get two times my pay on overtime. Overtime is everything after six hours. Actually, it's everything after eight. Hmm. Not in the broadcast business. We're Great not just sitting around here on TMZ.com. Kind of wish we were. Well, if we were, Dave, you'd know that Kim Kardashian just moved her stuff out of her and her new husband's home, Chris Pumphreys. There were boxes moved today. It had makeup in it, clothes. He moved out some boxes yesterday, sans his wedding ring. But you're not on that site, so you wouldn't know. Hmm. Like Desi, really slow getting up there. We've managed to talk about everything except but for this match. <laughs> the match. I'm sure the players will be thrilled watching this. <laughs> I'm actually replay. more wanting to know about Lindsay Lohan. Well, Lindsay Lohan arrested again for violating probation. Didn't show up for a community service. Said her work at the Women's Center was unfulfilling. The judge saw it otherwise. She was ordered directly to the morgue where she put in a 12-hour shift and she'll be back on trial November 2nd. Expect some jail time. Her dad says that he believes she's addicted to crystal meth and smoking crack. Okay. A good combination. Two, second man serving, 10, serving one. Thank you for that TMZ Four. update. As we're back Second into the serve. match with Paul Brady serving here at 10 to 1. And Paul Brady knowing that Desi Keegan's covering the ball straight down the right wall, so he hits the front wall, right side wall, angles the ball away from Desi Keegan. It's a dive right there from Sheamus. I'd like to know what's going on with Nancy Grace in the Dancing with the Stars. Huh. I don't know if you have any updates on that or maybe the X Factor. Hmm. Wish I did. 12, 1. I thought you did. Colters won. I've got my favorites, and those aren't on the list. I could tell you a little bit about Ashton and Demi, though, but you didn't ask. 13. 13 to 1, 8 points away from making the finals here. And this will be a flat rollout. Good enough. Now it's at 14 to 1. Paul Brady dispatching Desi Keegan and Seamus O'Carroll all by himself here. Make that 15 to 1 now. No disrespect to any of the doubles teams in this field, Dave, 15, which one. means that you know there will be some disrespect coming. But I believe Paul Brady would win this doubles competition two on one. Ooh, that is disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> that really is disrespectful. Probably unnecessary to say. It, I would say it was unprovoked. Therefore, not necessary. One. I'm going to apologize for you, which is something I don't One, normally do. Serving 15. I think
think our rules committee will find you a couple more gift certificates to Starbucks. One, 15. No more gift cards for you. Wow. Taking it one step farther, Dave, as you Which see I it. hope you don't. I will. If you had to bet right. on Paul Brady against the field, one on two, who do you take? One, 15. Paul Brady's entered in the double I by would, himself. I would not. You have to bet. I would not vote against him. So you're putting your money on Paul Brady then? You just lured me into this stupid thing, and now I'm part of it. I'm going to get fined, and now they're going to take away my gift card to Hometown Buffet. That was your only goal. I know what you're trying to do. Now I'm part of this. That's not fair. That was a sneaky 15, move. Serving one. Handball's pretty athletic game. Good for your physique. <laughs> Look at the score here. 15, one. 15 serves one, Paul Brady serving. Football. Referee front calling a front football. Second serve. Okay, I I give in. What's what's up with Jimmy Not Moore out. and Ashton Kutcher? I don't sense any sincerity there. One, fifteen. I have to beg you for the information. Well, as you know, this is a variety show we have here. As you know, Dave Vincent. Ashton Kutcher was caught with two girls two weeks ago in a San Diego hotel, Hard Rock Cafe hot tub on his sixth anniversary. Ooh. But you already knew that. Uh huh. Yeah. His wife was filming a movie in New York City, thinking ball. that her husband was One serve. sitting at home and serve. thinking about their beautiful relationship. But it wasn't to be. And Demi Moore, Dave, fed up with the cheating. This wasn't the first offense for Ashton. One, 15. And now, sources close to Demi say that she's already consulting divorce attorneys, but Kabbalah experts saying that their marriage isn't even legal. Stay tuned. Okay, there you go. That's the TMZ wrap-up show from Dave Fink, who obviously has some time on his hands, which is Something that happens when you get exited out of every tournament in the first round. You have a lot of time on your hands. That's true. Still second man, two, serving 15. Seamus O'Carroll serving at two to 15 second game. Seamus and Desi scored nine in the first. Nice shot right there from Mike Finnegan who punches that left-handed paddle right front corner kill to get the side out. Dave, let's talk a little bit about the difference between the four-wall pros and the three-wall big ball pros. Dave, the three-wall court set up outside on the tennis court here that Maria Sharapova uses. Every three-wall pro sits in the stands all day. They jump out onto the court when it's their turn to play, and then they sit right back down to watch. You don't see the four-wall pros for one second before they play or after they play. Talk a little bit about that. First dichotomy there in. between the two groups. The 15, dichotomy between the two groups. Two. Well, that's because the four wall pros have gone outside to also watch the big ball pros. That's why they're not inside. They're amazed 16, as well, and they're two. also out there. How do you like that dichotomy? Well, it's it's Breakdown. incorrect information. I would like for you to prove it. I will be down there tomorrow with my camera. Paul Brady going up top here, see if he can reset the action. Let's hope we can reset the action for tomorrow. I, I think this, this is like the home run hitting contest, Major League Baseball. I was going to say, it's like a rain delay during Major League Baseball, but either way, it's not pretty. Just hope that our swing comes back tomorrow. Because well, you know what they you say may have when ruined you, it. Well, you know, when you 
swing in the home run derby is it destroys ball. your swing. A lot of players coming to the home run derby really swinging well and lose their swing for the rest of the season trying to hit the ball 550 feet. And for us, talking about Demi and Ashton and Lindsay and Kardashians, that might have just taken us out of our game. Our swing might be off. I don't doubt it. We'll find out tomorrow at 8 a.m. Fortunately, we have a huge women's match to look forward to in the morning, Dave. I can't see us not being focused for that. Are you saying we're not focused for this? I'm focused. Still first man, 17, serving two. Wow, that Triple. ball just came back fast. That's the reason why. The ball slid on the ground. And Paul Brady even motioning to our referee. He wouldn't have known who the referee was had Nacho not donned that shirt. 17. Could have been two. looking into the crowd. Check ball. Seventeen, two. Michael Finnegan is going to get married to Lorraine Quinn on November 5th. Michael and will be out. a hitched up man. Have that ball and two. chain attached to his leg. That means his handball Four. career will be officially over starting November 5th. Well, he may be able Second to play serve. once in a while, but he'll never win again. Mammy and Chloe also watching Mike Finnegan and the rest of his family. Oh, that was amazing out. shot there from That was Desi a laser Keegan. right there from Desi Keegan. Unbelievable Two, shot. 17. Two serve 17. We haven't talked much about Desi, Dave, but he's one of the most engaging, charming guys that you'll ever meet inside or outside of handball. He's actually really intelligent. And he's just a, a great guy to have a crack. Not sure I used that properly. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you did. Okay. That's a point. Three, 17. Play it again. Play getting a little sloppy in there right now, Dave, as Paul Three, Brady 17. not putting away a couple of opportunities. We haven't said that in about eight years. <laughs> the game's very simple, Dave, when you see the setup and kill the setup. Three, 17. You heard Fred Lewis saying, Dave, a lot of the top players overcomplicate the game. They try and fool their opponents, it. step one way and swing You're the other way, ball? head fakes, ball? patty cake shots, paddle ball You're shots, rather than That's just seeing the shot and Four, taking a full 17. swing and driving the ball and killing the ball. Three to seven. Sorry to talk about handball. I can yeah, see that I you're not interested. <laughs> Long ball, second serve. Could you define what a paddle ball shot paddle ball shot is? It's what would go down in your scorecard as a PK or a PKA, a paddle kill or a paddle Five, kill attempt. 17. Oh, okay. Five serve 17 here. This is the second game. We actually named that shot, Dave, for one of the sports that we share at the World Outdoor Racquetball Championship, paddle ball, one of those three sports. We made great friends with those guys, Dave. And Life we realized lifelong friends. It's almost like a fraternity when the paddle ball group and the handball group get together. If we can right see on. a replay of that shot right there from Paul Brady, not sure we can, but I doubt we'll do replay if the scoreboard's wrong. 17, serving six. But Paul Brady takes that revolving door and rolls it flat. Look at Paul Brady with those backhand punch fists and this should be a big kill shot there, and it is. Here's that replay. Watch what Paul does here, Dave. Whoop. Just amazing shot. I played Paul Brady one time, Dave. I've never seen so many flat kills in my life. 
in a year combined as he hit two short games. Look at that. It's just amazing how he can place that ball one inch high off the front wall like that. 19-6. Score is 19-6. to six. Two points away, and Paul Brady and Mike Finnegan will advance to the finals. I'm really looking forward to that men's doubles final tomorrow morning at 9.30, Davis. Marco Chavez and Vince Munoz have that incredible match. chemistry, but so do Michael Finnegan and Paul Brady. Both these teams have played together for so many years, won so many big championships together. Certainly, Dave, Paul Brady will be the best player on the court like he always is, but you can't count out Marco Chavez and Vince Munoz, particularly the way we watched Vince point. Munoz playing tonight. Here it is, match point. Paul's going to put this away with a crack serve. He Plus got it. Ball. I did not see a slide there, but our referee has done a perfect job so far, Two Dave, serve. so I'm sure it wasn't. He's actually thrown a perfect game since changing into Third. that shirt. Before that, he did make a couple Second errors. Serve. Desi going for slop time, going for it again, and actually gets this side out. And as a result of that slop time, Dave, we will miss our dinner reservation, so. Six, serving 20. Now you got me upset. In my opinion, Dave, this match should have ended about 15 seconds ago. We Six, would have been 20. at our restaurant in 22 minutes. Now, Dave, we won't be at our restaurant for at least 25 minutes. And, you know, at these fancy Orange County establishments, Dave, they don't care who you are. They don't care if you're the WPH crew or the Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. They just send you home. Second man, 6 to 20. 6, 20. Check the ball. You're watching the Simple Green U.S. Open of Second Handball serve. Men's Semifinals. Winner faces Vince Munoz and Marco Chavez. Side out. And that's a tough break there for Desi Keegan. 20. Match point, six. Here it is, match point again. And That's Paul Brady time. and Mike Finnegan take down Desi Keegan and Seamus O'Carroll. Just about three minutes too late though for us, Dave, as we will go to bed without supper tonight. <laughs> uh, Ashleen Riley and Megan Mihilis tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Tell all of your friends to tune into the live broadcast at racefor8.com. After that, it will be the finals of the men's doubles at 9.30 in the morning as Paul Brady and Mike Finnegan that you just saw there face Vincent Munoz and Marco Chavez who will be going for their fifth U.S. Open title. And then at 11 o'clock, it's Robbie McCarthy facing Charlie Shanks. I think you said that too loud. Then at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. Charlie Shanks and Robbie McCarthy. So that'll be here at, uh, at tomorrow Sunday in Fountain Valley, California. We are going to say goodbye for today. It's been a long broadcast today, a day today, and it's going to even be bigger tomorrow as we go uh, and take our cameras about this time and go back out to the three-wall courts and have more action out there. So we're going to say see you later. Thanks for having us. It's always nice being had. We're going to be back tomorrow. For Dave Fink, Fred Lewis, and those that helped out with the production, Linda Manning, Jeff Kastner, Chris Garad, my name is Dave Vincent. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Hello, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green. Our non-toxic, biodegradable, all-purpose cleaner works great for cleaning it. Thank you. Non-toxic, biodegradable, simple green. It's great for cleaning.